Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. For premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get into the uh, Johnny Gonzalez versus Abner Maris fight, let me just tell you my philosophy on uh, some things that pertain to this fight. I was watching the NBA Finals and I was looking at LeBron James and I didn't see LeBron do anything out of the ordinary. I didn't think he was doing anything that dramatic. He seemed to just be playing his game. He seemed to just be letting the game come to him. And of course, in those finals, LeBron James had two triple doubles on his way to NBA Finals MVP, right? For LeBron, it was just another day at the office. Those are the guys I like, right? In other words, the guy's just playing his game. He ends up with a triple double, right? He's not an effort guy. He's not, you know, out there going overboard, trying to do spectacular things. He's not a volume guy, right? He can literally just show up with his skills. And he is so skilled, has worked on his skills to such an extent that his brilliance almost seems boring, right? Those are the guys I want to bet on. Right? I don't want to bet on guys who need to have great nights and who need to be inspired in order to win. So in football, for example, there was a wide receiver, Jerry Rice. Right? Let's just say, you know, Jerry never dove for balls. Jerry never really had to jump for balls. Right? Jerry Rice was like LeBron James. His brilliance was such that he just knew how to catch balls in crowds, right? You know, he was going to run his route. He was going to have the DB on his shoulder. And Jerry knew how to position himself and change speeds in such a way that that DB stayed on his shoulder. And he was able to catch balls, right? Arguably the best receiver in NFL history. The key, though, is you rarely saw Jerry Rice make acrobatic catches. Hardly ever, right? This was a guy who literally just had it figured out. I'll give a better example. I know Dwight Howard just signed with Houston, right? Dwight Howard to me is your prototypical effort guy, right? I don't see the go-to move offensively. Dwight Howard beats you by out hustling you. He's a hustler, right? You know, nothing wrong with that. He's out there, you know, when he comes in and he's inspired, he can beat you to some loose balls and stuff like that. But I prefer guys who can be asleep at the wheel and dominate you. Right? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar didn't have to have a lot of effort because he had it down to a science where he was going to keep you on his hip and he was going to hit that sky hook. Right? There was nothing you could do about it. He had the positioning. Once he caught the ball in the right place, the rest of it was just rote. Right? He could dial it in. He could hit that sky hook all the way out to 15 feet. Again, the boring is beautiful. Let me point out too. And just look this up online because it's a bit of a shocker. But Kareem was also a dominant shot blocker for a period in his career. But yet we don't think of Kareem like we would think of, let's say, a Shaquille O'Neal, classic effort guy, right? Because Kareem's blocks were the kind of blocks where, again, just like a skyhook, he figured out where he had to be. He figured out how he had to jump, right? He didn't have to have, you know, an aggressive look on his face or an attitude to dominate. Those are the guys I like, right? I like dull. I like boring. I like the idea that if I bet on LeBron, he can show up 
look like he's just having his regular game and get a triple double right you show me a guy who can dominate in slow motion and I'll show you a guy who is definitely worth betting on I'm not that big of a fan of Derrick Rose, right? He's a young guy who has to be running all over the place and jumping up and down and stuff like that to be effective, right? I prefer a guy like Ray Allen, where Ray Allen's just out there jogging. He can come off a pick, bang, three-pointer, right? Ray doesn't look like he's really trying that hard. Then you look at the box score and he has 20 points and he has something like three threes and stuff like that, right? Doesn't have to work hard to get the three. It looks effortless. That's what I like. Let's talk about this fight. You know, Johnny Gonzalez has long been one of my favorite fighters. In my opinion, this guy is your prototypical boxer, puncher. He makes it look easy. Right? He's so good, he can just come out there, play chess with you, literally, just, you know, box with you. Then he can drop the hammer. Then he can knock you out. Right? In my opinion, he's the man with the bigger gun in this fight. In my opinion, he's the man with the better boxing skills in this fight. Now, YouTube Nation disagrees with me. YouTube Nation loves Abner Maris. I'll concede that Abner Maris has proven me wrong time and time again. Right? He has a great resume. He beat Vic Darchinian. I believe I had him in that fight. He beat Camino Moreno. I know I didn't have him in that fight. He beat Joseph Agbeko. He beat Daniel Ponce de Leon, right? But in my opinion, Abner Maris has to come in and has to be inspired. He has to work hard. He's the opposite of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James, and Johnny Gonzalez, right? In my opinion, he's what I call a volume and legs guy, right? He comes in, he's taking a lot of punishment he dives in, he throws a lot of punches, his fights become, of course, big time battles. It's a matter of who wants it more, as opposed to who has more, right? And his defense, to me, is basically his legs. I don't see a lot of upper body movement. What I see is a guy who, when things get hot, sometimes he takes a step back. Now, that's different to me than what Johnny Gonzalez is bringing to the table. Now I'll concede, Johnny Gonzalez has been inconsistent, right? Something always seems to go wrong. He was about to win the title at 122 pounds against Israel Vasquez when he got dropped for the second time in the fight and his corner curiously stopped the bout. Note that Gonzalez, being a puncher, right, in addition to having advanced boxing skills, had dropped Vasquez twice in that fight, right? In my opinion, Gonzalez, who recently lost to Daniel Ponce de Leon with a very questionable strategy, either Gonzalez outboxes and undresses Maris, he could even KO Maris, or Gonzalez gets KO'd himself. The bet I like is Gonzalez the underdog to win this fight, hedged with Maris by KO, right? What I don't see happening, and I know this is contrary to popular wisdom, but what I don't see happening is Abner Maris winning this fight if it goes to a decision. In my opinion, he simply doesn't have the boxing skills that Johnny Gonzalez has. Understand, Gonzalez is one of the best in boxing at keeping you at the end of a jab. 
Maris is going to have a very hard time, and I mean a very hard time, getting by Johnny Gonzalez's jab. And when he does get by the jab, he's going to be hit with hard punches from an authentic featherweight, right? Understand that Abner Maris, and I understand Maris, of course, has one of the belts at featherweight. But understand that Abner Maris had not fought at featherweight until his fight against Daniel Ponce de Leon. And understand that he had a certain comfort level in that fight because, of course, he had sparred with Ponce de Leon in the past, right? Prior to that fight, understand, featherweight's 126. He fought Camito Moreno, right, at 122. Understand before that fight, he fights Eric Morrell at 120. So here he is against a big puncher, big puncher, at 126 pounds, who quite frankly has the superior boxing skills. I know Maris is very well known, and I mean very well known, among the boxing public because he's been on HBO several times. But just understand, he doesn't have the rep at 126 pounds. Johnny Gonzalez is the taller boxer and knows how to keep you outside. If Abner Maris tries to recklessly dive in, like he did against Camito Moreno, this time he'll be dealing with a guy who has power. And understand, Johnny Gonzalez doesn't have to be inspired to dominate this fight because his skill set is such that all he has to do is bring his normal game and he should be able to have the upper hand on the scorecards. I like Johnny Gonzalez to win this fight hedged with Abner Maris by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.